Okay, now that we know uh, how implicit free lists work, let's look at explicit free lists. So in implicit free lists, uh, the reason we call it implicit was because we had a, a list we could you know, traverse the entire heap and we, we knew implicitly, you know, based on the bit that was uh, a bit that tells whether it's allocated or not, whether the block is free or not. So it was implicit because I had to traverse it to figure it out. Now with explicit free lists, we're going to link free blocks together explicitly. How do we do that? Well, instead of just having the size and uh, a bit saying whether it's allocated or not, like we had an implicit free list for each block, what we're going to do is since in free blocks we do not have the payload and the padding, we're going to use pointers. We're going to use, we're going to put pointers there, one that points to the next uh, free block and one that points to the previous one. Okay? So, uh, and by the way, we're still going to need boundary tags for coalescing. Right? We'll, see, we'll see examples of that. Um, now, and logically, it's a doubly linked list. As I said, you know, we have pointed to the previous one and pointed to, to the next one. So logically, it feels like, you know, organizing some order here. But physically, you know, when you look at how it's in memory, it could be really in any order. Okay, so you have one and the other and so on. So let's see how allocating from, from explicit lists uh, look like. Okay, so for example, here we have, uh, this is before the allocation, and we have a pointer to the next block, and these are all free blocks, okay? These are all free blocks. And uh, this is pointing in one direction, pointing in the other direction. And when we allocate, say that we find and we choose this one, so we choose this one, so now that's what we're gonna return to malloc, and this part is allocated, and whatever is free, it's going to be split, and now we're gonna insert this block uh, back in this. We're gonna update the pointers here, so we include this one here. In the, in the explicit free list. Okay, that's how we allocate it. It's pretty simple, right? Well, freeing is a little bit more complicated because now there's an insertion policy, right? Remember that uh, the blocks can actually be in any actual order in this list, right? So picking where we're gonna put the block once we free something is very, very important, okay? So, uh, so uh, to summarize, the insertion policy is where in the free list you put a newly free block. And there's two basic policies. The first one is called uh, LIFO, last in, first out policy. So that you insert a free block at the beginning of the free list always. Okay. The pro is that it's pretty simple and constant time because you always have a pointer at the beginning of the list. But the con is that studies suggest that fragmentation is worse than just ordering by address, which is the other policy. Address order, what it does is just links them in, in a way such that addresses of the previous uh, block is uh, lower than the address of the current one, and it's lower than the next one, and so on. So it's just address order. The con is that it requires linear time uh, search when blocks are freed because you have to find where the time it goes. But studies suggest that fragmentation is lower, and that's an interesting question. And by the way, memory allocation in general is just full of heuristics. Okay, it's just very hard to make sure that it's very hard to make a provably best allocator. So it's nearly impossible, potentially even impossible. So this is just full of um, of heuristics. Okay, so let's see how the LIFO policy works. Okay, so we have the first case here. So the first case is we have a free block and there's nothing, it's, it, we free a block in the middle of something allocated. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna free it and, up, and since we're doing live for last in, first out, it's gonna be, it's, this is going to be inserted at the beginning of the list. So now the root points to this new free block and then we update the pointers accordingly. The, the old one, now the old first one just points back to the one that was just inserted. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so let's see the other case. The other case here is that we're freeing something and right before it, we have, right before it, we have a block that's free. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to um, merge it, okay? And, uh, but now no, the, the resulting block, the resulting block here is the one that gets inserted uh, in the beginning of the list. So now the root points here. Okay, because we just got this old block here and extended it with the one that we just freed. Simple, right? Great, let's see one more case here. Now suppose that what we're, going, what we're doing, we're going to free a block and then right next to it, after it, we have a free block. We're going to do the same we did, as, as we did before. We're going to merge into a larger block. Okay, we're going to merge this whole thing into a larger free block. And then we're going to 
update the links accordingly such, accordingly, such that the root now points to this newly formed larger block. We remove the older block here because it really doesn't exist, it's just part of a larger one now, and we're going to update the pointers accordingly. Okay? Good. So like the, the fourth and uh, last case here is when you say that you free a block, and then there's, act, there's two blocks that on either side, on both sides of it, that are now can be coalesced into one large block. So we're going to we're going to remove the old ones from the list. We're going to create a new large block, and we're going to insert this large block at the beginning of the list. So the root points there now. Pretty cool, right? Okay. So now we create a big block. Hopefully this happens a lot. So we're going to have more uh, lots of large blocks. So to to summarize, comparing uh, explicit free list to implicit free list, the allocate is linear in the number of free blocks instead of all blocks, like what we had in the, implicit, in the implicit free list. And this is much faster when most of the memory is full. Well, why is that? Because when most of the memory is full, in the implicit case, we're going to have to traverse entire memory. Okay, so we, ha we might have to traverse not the entire memory, but most of memory until we find one. It's likely that we're gonna do that. With explicit free list, you know, that's just, we just know it, okay? It's slightly more complicated to allocate and free because it needs to splice blocks in and out of the lists. Okay. We also need some extra space for the links, so uh, two extra words needed for each block. So that means that the minimum free block size has to be, might have to be a little bit larger, so it leads to more internal fragmentation, such as life, but I think it's worth it. And uh, so in most common use of explicit free lists is, what we, is with what we call segregated free lists, where the idea is to keep multiple linked lists of different sizes, of free blocks, uh, and even possible for different types of objects, okay? That's what, that's what we're going to see now. That's the math, method uh, three, okay? Uh, so it, the concept is very, very simple. We're going to have a bunch of size classes, and for each size class, we're going to have a free, explicit free list. So here's for size one and two, we have one. For size three, we have another one, and so on, okay? And often we have separate classes for each small size. And then we have one, you see this, you know, this, those are the small ones, and then we have nine, and if you need a big, big one. Okay, so, and for larger size, we have one for each uh, two power size, okay, power of two size. So how, how, how does that work in a little bit more detail? Uh, here's how we're going to allocate it. Okay, so given this array of free lists and each one of some class sizes, if you allocate a block of size n, what you're going to do first is we're going to find a list of size m that's larger than the size n that you want. If we, if if we find uh, a block that's appropriate, we just allocate it. If no block is found, we just try the next larger class and repeat until a block is found. And of course, if no block is found, you have to go and increase the size of the heap using this uh, a system called asbreak that I had mentioned before as well. Okay? So, uh, and then when we do that, we're going to allocate a block of n size, uh, of size n from this new memory and place the remainder of, uh, as a single free block in the largest class. Okay, we want to keep things as large as possible and then start uh, uh, splitting them. Okay? Great. So uh, when you free a block, you want to free the block, look at the resulting free block, coalesce it as much as you can, and then reinsert that block into the appropriate list. Okay? So um, that's pretty cool, right? So now we might have, and when we free, we might actually change the category, we have to insert it in a different, uh, in a different list. So the advantage of segregated list aggregators, or segregated list allocators, uh, is higher throughput. Okay, we have log time for power of two size classes, right? To be a logarithmic um, time to, to to find the appropriate one, and also has uh, better memory utilization because f the first fit search on this allocated uh, uh, on the segregated free list really approximates the best fit that we had uh, of the entire heap. Okay, really it's an approximate, not exactly, but some an approximate, okay? So, uh, in an extreme case, if you give each block its own uh, size class in, a, in the array of lists, that's going to be equivalent to best fit, okay? All right, so to summarize, uh, the summary of the key allocated properties, uh, allocated policies are, the placement policy we have first fit, next fit, and best fit, okay? That's some. So, and this trades off throughput for, la for fragmentation. Okay. So the observation I just told you is that segregated free lists approximate the best fit placement without having to search the entire free list. 
And so we have uh, a splitting policy. When do we go ahead and split free blocks? Okay, so that depends on how much internal fragmentation are we willing to tolerate. Okay, so you might to, um, and so there's also coalescing policy. You could do coalescing um, as soon as you do free. Okay, when you call free, just do it right away. So that might have some throughput uh, implications because you do more work at free. Or you can just delay it as long as you can. Uh, so you don't pay the throughput, but then you might be paying more um, fragmentation. Okay? See you soon.